So the man will start to loosen the woman's undergarments, her bra, and all the social groups where the married women go to because they are lonely are where the sex predators are. Hello Channel Need viewers, I am DS and welcome to another episode on Channel Need. So Channel Need is not just an ordinary psychology channel, we try to provide you with unique content that you cannot find anywhere else. So if you have not subscribed, do consider subscribing to us so that you will get notified whenever we upload a juicy video oh. like this one. So in this episode, we are going to expose some underground secrets that insiders know very well. But I am sure many of our viewers are not insiders, so you will find today's content very shocking. Yes, shocking, not shocking. <laughs> so in this episode, I am going to narrate how married women are baited to have sex with a man who is not her husband. So we are going to focus on the tactics that some men use. So the time period that we are talking about is Hong Kong in the 1980s and 1990s. But I am sure all these tactics may have been applied successfully in other countries as well. So even in Singapore. So a disclaimer first, these videos describe tactics that have been used in the 1980s and the 1990s and may not be relevant today. So let's go back to the 1990s. This is a time where husbands are usually the only breadwinners of the family. So you could go down to a street in Hong Kong and you can find a very young mummy with a five-year-old child walking with her on the streets and she is only 23 years old. <coughs> So she may be a mummy, but a young, attractive one. Even married women in their 30s can be very attractive and have high market value. And it is this group of women, women in their 30s, they are the most vulnerable to sex predators. Why? Because this group of women, their children have gotten old enough to go to school themselves. So, so. so she's usually alone at home and she has nothing much to do. So women like this will usually join a social group like a bowling group or a karaoke group or a line dance group Is there line dance this time? Maybe a ballroom dancing group And why does she do that? Because she has been raising her child for a long time and she has been out of the workforce for an equally long period of time and she does not know how to get back to the workforce So women of that era usually just join a social group to kill the time and all the social groups where the married women go to because they are lonely are where the sex predators are. And these sex predators are usually very patient men who are either married or widowed. So these men are also tired of the common prostitute and they want something different and exciting. While these men usually hunt alone, they actually form insider cliques with other different men over a beer table where they will discuss how they can actually do their jobs better. So I am going to bring you to that table and explain to you what they do and why they do this. First of all, we understand that married women of that era are very lonely. They are usually alone at home and they have nothing to do. Also, they have already been married to their husbands for 10 over years and their relationship may not be that satisfactory anymore. So what this means is that these women are going to be the most vulnerable to sex predators. So these men, what they do is that they will infiltrate all these KTV groups, bowling groups, ballroom dancing groups to find all these lonely women. They would befriend their target. They would also be very patient and not act immediately. They usually just start by chit-chatting and building a friendship. So over time, the sex predator and the target will get to know each other better. This usually takes about two months. And in some cases, the relationship might get a little bit ambiguous. Then this man, the sex predator, will start to invite the target, the married woman, for a tea. Usually the tea house that the man chooses is a place that is nearby to his own house. If not, to a hotel that he has already booked. 
The common tactic that the men will use in this case will be to drug the cup of tea and the woman is going to likely get a hay date so there is an opportunity to bring her up to the intended room and what will happen next? Behind closed doors, the man will start to molest the woman and what I'm going to describe now is very pictorial and x-rated so viewer discretion, okay? So the point to note is that the woman is not sedated so she's conscious she's just having a headache the drug usually gives her a bad headache so the man will start to loosen the woman's undergarments her bra her panties and what he will do is to lick her nipples or her clitoris so can you picture this the woman is still fully dressed but the man has totally buried his head into the bra or into her skirt trying to give her some stimulation so naturally the woman will resist but the man will go on at all costs so ultimately this oral stimulation is going to be too much for the woman and she succumbs what is the principle behind this? so actually the woman is an unwilling party usually an unwilling party but there may be cases where the woman is also willing however let's say that the woman is an unwilling party so the woman is at least emotionally not willing to have sex with this man but with constant stimulation either on the nipples or the clitoris her body is triggered and what this means is that she will start to experience this conflicting emotion because she's enjoying the stimulation but she doesn't like it because she feels that she's betraying her family I hope you can understand the situation over here so when your body keeps getting stimulated you will feel aroused right? <laughs> and when you keep getting aroused there will come a point where you cannot resist but to head towards more enjoyment and this is exactly what happens in this situation ultimately this despicable man will get to have sex with the target and they have specifically chosen this group of women this target group of married women in their 30s because of two reasons first because these women generally still would like to protect their own family so they will not want to disclose this incident to the police especially also to the husband right so they will keep this a secret next number two a compelling reason for the married woman not to disclose the incident is that she actually felt that she was a consensual party in this entire incident because at one point in time at least she was actually enjoying the experience so in a way this group of sex predators they are very cunning and despicable Run. their objective is just to have sex with this married woman and they get it so after this incident the married woman is usually likely to quit the entire group altogether because she's too embarrassed to go back to the group so it also solves the problem of the man having a woman to tag along and the man will start to find another new target elsewhere or within the same group so you can imagine how good a strategy this had been right okay let's come back to the story again no matter how you see it because the woman is an unwilling party in this sexual exchange it is actually rape in the history of mankind, some men have been raped before as well. So people may ask this question, how can a man ever be raped by women? Of course it is possible because the woman, when they keep stimulating the genital organs of the man, the man will be aroused. So the body starts to be willing to do it, but emotionally, the man is not willing. That is still considered rape. The unfortunate thing is that should the man go and charge the woman for rape 
the lawyer is likely to argue that the man had an erection in the process and therefore he's a willing party. So we all need to know that the body is generally programmed to enjoy stimulation. I hope this video is educational in a way and does not get you to have wild sexual fantasies, okay? So in our sequel to this episode, we will talk about how syndicates engage different strategies to bait married women to sell their body willingly for extra pocket money. So if you are interested to know how these syndicates do it, do stay tuned to find out. So Channel 8 prides on being a channel that produces unique content like this. So do remember to subscribe if you have not subscribed. And you can expect more exciting, thought-provoking and interesting material down the road. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you again in my next episode. Goodbye!